do you have courage to go further the holy spirit was given unto us so that no matter how the situations are no matter how the circumstances are we can still follow christ praise god no matter what is in front of you no matter how big the stone looks in front of you the woman did not stay at home thinking that nobody can roll that stone no we wanted to go there we wanted to see the christ resurrection we wanted to see the resurrected christ because there is power in the resurrection they knew that the spirit that raised christ from the dead can help them to go and see the resurrected christ hallelujah so god has given us the rod the word of god the prayer god is coming to you walking on the water same water which they will tossed God is using the same stone to let his angels sit on it but the question is are we having fellowship with the holy spirit are we led by the spirit of god the bible talks about being led by the spirit of god if you are led by the spirit of god no matter what is in front of you you will go forward because you know that god will make a way for you because he is greater than you he is greater than the devil he that lives in you is greater than he that lives in the world so when devil tries to throw stones on you turn them into milestones today my topic is what the devil has planned for evil god has planned for good i have many personal experiences in my life that i can share but uh, i wanted to bring three instances and three examples from the bible the first example i wanted to talk about is the red sea we all heard about the red sea in the old testament we know that people of israel had to cross the red sea to enter into the promised land which flowed with milk and honey and we know god sent about 10 plagues over egypt so that the king pharaoh can release the people of israel from the bondage we all know the story very well whenever the plague was sent by god pharaoh accepted to send the people of israel but he asked moses to call unto god to stop the plague when pharaoh saw that plague was stopped then he changed his mind now after 10 plagues pharaoh accepted and he let the people of israel go out of egypt out of bondage but do you know what happened once they left the devil inspired pharaoh to go after the people of israel let me read joshua chapter 24 verse 6 and i brought your fathers out of egypt and he came unto the sea and the egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the red sea pharaoh let the people of israel go from the bondage but when the people of israel were right in front of the red sea that's when pharaoh thought now this is the time for me to go and attack the people of israel devil intended this red sea to kill the people of israel devil thought that this god's children will be killed in the red sea if not by the army of the pharaoh so pharaoh now with his army came to the red sea do you know what happened at the red sea psalm 136 verse 15 says but swept pharaoh and his army into the red sea but now god used the same red sea to kill 
Pharaoh and his army. Pharaoh thought that there won't be any chance for the people of Israel to escape from the bondage. The devil intended the Red Sea for the evil of the children of God, but God used it for the good. God is able to turn things for us, but the question is how and when it will happen. Because in our lives we all face trials and troubles and tribulations and temptations. And that is where the devil wants to attack us. Remember, Pharaoh could have killed all Israel while they were in Egypt. He could have done that, but he did not do that because the devil thought that at the Red Sea, the children of God will kill themselves. And I believe devil always takes us to a place like a Red Sea where a believer has no option. So I wanted to compare the Red Sea with the trials and troubles and temptations and tribulations that we face in our spiritual journey. Devil will attack you when the Red Sea is in front of you. But God can turn that evil into good. But when I wanted to read Exodus chapter 14, verses 16. Before God made a way for the people of Israel in the Red Sea, he told to Moses what to do. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So now God is telling to Moses to lift up the rod. And I wanted to compare that rod with the word of God today. God has given us his word to us. In those days, God has given rod to the Moses. And Moses used that rod to perform God's miracles in Egypt. And now in our spiritual life, God has given us a rod. And when you are in front of the Red Sea, and when you are followed by Pharaoh and his army, the enemy, God has given you a rod, which is the word of God. And to turn that evil into good, you have to lift the word of God. And then here, the Lord is telling to Moses to stretch out his hand over Red Sea. And I wanted to compare stretching out our hand with the prayer. God has given us his word and God has given us access to pray. Praise the Lord. So, if we can use these both tools which God has given us, no matter what is in front of you, no matter what is behind you, God can make a way to go through what you are going through. But if you don't lift the word of God, if you don't use the word of God, if you don't stretch out your hand, and if you don't pray, that's where you have only two options, whether to commit suicide or whether to go back to Egypt and live in bondage. God never intended us to be in bondage. God brought us from this bondage through Christ Jesus. We have to cross the Red Sea to enter into the place which God has promised us. So to cross, God has given us the word of God and the prayer. So we have to use the word of God and the prayer in our spiritual walk in order to cross the Red Sea. Not only in order to cross the Red Sea, but also to overcome the Pharaoh, the devil. When Moses stretched out his hand, and when Moses lifted up his rod, there was a way for the people of Israel. So they crossed with the Red Sea. But again, God told to Moses, after passing the Red Sea, to lift up the rod again and to stretch out his hand again towards the Red Sea, because that's when 
Pharaoh and his army were killed in the Red Sea. My question this morning is, are we continuing to lift the word of God, to use the word of God, and to pray in our spiritual life? It should not be a one-time event. It should be a continuous process because if the people of Israel would not have done what God has asked them to do again, Pharaoh and his army might have crossed the Red Sea and followed even to the promised land. So we must have a personal relationship with God every day. Not in the past, not in the present, not in the future. So I want to encourage you to use the word of God which God has given us. And the way how God taught me to use it is by memorizing his word. Use the word of God to pray. I heard many preachers say, pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing. And when I read Bible, Jesus said, pray always. And Paul said to the church in Thessalonica that you should pray without ceasing. So I went to my prayer room and I looked at my watch and I told to myself today, I wanted to pray for at least three hours. So I closed my eyes and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I prayed and I prayed and I thought, oh my God, I have prayed three hours today. But when I looked at my watch, it was only five minutes. Because you can only pray for a few minutes without word of God. You can pray for yourselves, you can pray for your friends, you can pray for your family, you can pray for your needs. But I think it only takes five minutes. But the Lord taught me to use the Word of God to pray, use the Word of God to worship. And I have a couple of books at the table which I have written, the practice of memorizing scriptures, reciting scriptures, meditating on them every day, helped me to write those books. Now, by the grace of God, I was able to spend three to four hours every day in prayer and meditation. And it is my desire to spend eight hours a day in prayer and meditation. And the other interesting thing is, God has already started working on the Red Sea. Exodus 10 verses 19 says, And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust, in all the coasts of Egypt. Before people of Israel were in front of the Red Sea, God already started working on the Red Sea. When God sent locusts to the land of Egypt to destroy the field and the food, after destroying, God sent those locusts right into the Red Sea. The locusts which were sent to eat the food and destroy the plants and fields of Egypt, now they were sent into the Red Sea. So no matter what you are going through, you may not see it right away with your eyes. God has already started working on you, praise the Lord. He's still right now working on you, working on behalf of you. You may not see it. All you may see is the Red Sea right in front of you. All you may see is Pharaoh and his army behind you. But don't worry, God is already working on you. And he has given you his word and the access to pray to use. The question is, are we using the word of God in our daily lives? Are we making use of the access which God has given unto us through Christ Jesus to pray unto God, the Father, every time, anywhere? And the second instance or the example I wanted to remind is from the New Testament. We all know in Matthew chapter 14, Jesus sent his disciples to go to the other side. In this 
particular incident, Jesus is not traveling with his disciples. I wanted to read Matthew chapter 14, verses 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. According to the word of Jesus, the disciples started their travel. The devil always wants to hinder our walk with Christ. So what the devil did here is, the devil tossed the waves. So when the waves are tossed up, do you know what happens? The water comes into the ship. When the water comes into the ship, that's when the ship sinks into the water. So here, the devil is using the water for the evil, but God is using the same water for the good. The water should be under the ship, not in the ship. I wanted to compare this water with the problems and the troubles and the trials and temptations, tribulations, whatever you face in your spiritual journey. We need them. If there is no water on that sea, the disciples of Jesus cannot go to the other side. We need water to go to the other side. But the devil uses the same water to get into the ship so that the, the ship can be drowned. But do you know what Jesus did? Let me read Mark chapter 6 verse 48. And Jesus saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. Now Jesus is walking on the same water which devil tried to bring into the ship. God can turn things for you. But the question is, are you able to recognize Jesus in the midst of the storm? The disciples thought that, that it was a ghost. They are afraid because Jesus looked as a ghost because the devil always makes us to feel Jesus as a ghost. Now the disciples have two options, whether to kill themselves or to go backwards because they are afraid of the ghost which is in front of them. But do you know what happened? John writes it more clearly in chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. So when they had rowed about 5 and 20 or 34 longs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I be not afraid. 21 says, Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. So when Jesus said, fear not, that's when they could hear the voice of Jesus and understand that it is not a ghost, but it is Jesus. Hallelujah. So my question here is, God can walk on the water, which water is tossed by the devil. God can turn that evil into good. He is coming towards you to do that. But are you able to hear God's voice in the midst of the noise of this world? Definitely there is a lot of noise. The waves are being tossed up. The wind is being, being blown. We know how it looks, how it sounds in the seashore. But the disciples of Jesus were able to hear God's wise even in the midst of that storm no matter how big storm you are going through god is still talking to you the spirit of god is still talking to you 
Sometimes it may seem to you like God is not with me. God is so far from me. God is not answering my prayers. No, God is right there. He came to his disciples because they were in trouble. God is there, but are you able to hear his voice? Do we have that connection with Christ? So they were able to understand it, and immediately they were able to receive Christ. So the question here I wanted to ask is, yes, the devil may tossing up the waves and bringing water into your ship to sink your ship, but God is able to walk on the same water to come unto you, to rescue you, but are you able to hear his voice in the midst of storm? Are you able to receive Christ? into your ship. Unless you hear, you cannot receive. And the third example I wanted to bring is Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 4. I wanted to read verses 4. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. We know a group of women, Mary and several other women, on the Sunday morning, they wanted to go to the tomb of Jesus. But as they were going, they had a question. There is a very great stone which was laid at the door of the tomb. They were thinking, who can roll that for us? But still they went forward and now they saw Matthew chapter 28 verses 2. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. And sat on it. The stone which this woman thought that it was so great to roll away. The stone which this woman thought will hinder them seeing the resurrection of Jesus. God sent his angel and not only God rolled that great stone away, now God is making his angel to sit on it to show them that he is much greater than that stone. Praise God. Now the angel of God is sitting right on the top of that stone which shows that, that God is much greater than that stone. God is able to remove all the things which you think you cannot handle on your own. God is able to remove all the hindrances in your life. But the question is, how could this woman could go to the tomb? When they were thinking, who can roll this great stone for us? Because we cannot do it on our own. But yet they went to the tomb. Do you have courage to go further? The Holy Spirit was given unto us so that no matter how the situations are, no matter how the circumstances are, we can still follow Christ, praise God. No matter what is in front of you, no matter how big the stone looks in front of you, the woman did not stay at home thinking that nobody can roll that stone. No, we wanted to go there. We wanted to see the Christ resurrection. We wanted to see the resurrected Christ because there is power in the resurrection. They knew that the spirit that raised Christ from the dead can help them to go and see the resurrected Christ. Hallelujah. So God has given us the rod, the word of God, the prayer. God is coming to you, walking on the water, same water which they will toss. God is using the same stone to let his angels sit on it. But the question is, are we having fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Are we led by the Spirit of God? The Bible talks about being led by the Spirit of God. If you are led by the Spirit of God, no matter what is in front of you, you will go forward because you know that God will make a way for you because He is greater than you. He is greater than the devil. He that lives in you is greater than he that lives in the world. So when devil tries to throw stones on you, turn them into milestones. Don't stop where you are. 
So here, I wanted to compare that stone with the trials and temptations and troubles and tribulations. Always know that God is greater than that, taller than that, mightier than them. So I want to encourage you to use the word of God, to use the prayer, listen the word of God, and enjoy the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let's close our eyes and pray. Our Heavenly Father, no matter if we're facing the Red Sea, no matter if the devil is tossing up the waves and bringing the water into our lives, no matter how big and great stones the devil has placed in front of us, help us to use your word and prayer. Help us to hear your word, Lord. Help us to receive you. Help us to have you in our lives every time. May we enjoy the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit to go to the other side. We thank you for all the provisions which you have already given. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.